a derogatory statement about Bangladesh, terming Bangladesh as an international basket case. History has proven Henry Kissinger's famous description of the infant state of Bangladesh to be wrong. Bangladesh has shown significant performance on economic development and various social development indicators. Our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, firmly believed in independence, peace, and stability. Bangladesh's social economic progress is a story of far-sighted public policies, political stability, and democratic continuity, economic liberalization over the decades. Bangladesh achieved more than 6% of GDP growth in the last 15 years. Of course, the GDP growth of uh, uh, 2019 was more than 8% before COVID. During COVID, even the world GDP growth was negative. Bangladesh sustained a positive growth of around 4%. Uh, in social indicators, women empowerment, uh, food security, poverty reduction, population control, improved health and education system are outcomes of prominent economic and public policies of our country. We are working hard to realize the dream of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who wanted to build a Sonar Bangla, that means prosperous golden Bangladesh. It envisions transforming Bangladesh into an upper middle income country by 2031 and a high income country by 2041. Distinguished participants, Bangladesh was born from the ideas of freedom, democracy, equality, justice, and inclusivity. The idea of democracy was the primary driving force even for the very sovereignty and independence of our country. Economic disparities and social injustices during Pakistani rules led to the nine month of nine month long war of independence of Bangladesh. Our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, supported the initiatives to secure dignity of human lives. Likewise, even today, Bangladesh has been sheltering more than 1 million, I mean 1.2 million Rohingyas from Myanmar, despite constraints of resources. It is committed for not only guaranteeing the safe and sustainable return of Rohingya people to their motherland, but also to ensure justice and accountability so that the atrocities which they suffered never happen again. Bangladesh calls upon international community to work together for a safe and early repatriation of Rohingya people to secure human rights, regional peace, and security. <laughs> Bangladesh maintains a zero tolerance policy towards terrorism and violent extremism. It is committed to promote peace and development across the globe. Bangladesh sponsors its flagship UNGA resolution on culture of peace and non-violence. Over the last three decades, Bangladesh's partnership with the UN in peacekeeping and peace-building operations has grown in depth and dimensions. Bangladesh is one of the largest troops and police contributing countries to the UN peacekeeping system. Many of our peacekeepers have lost their lives while on duty. Yet, our, our resolve to serve has not been shaken. Dear colleagues, while contributing 
less than 0.47 percent of global carbon emissions, Bangladesh is one of the most climate vulnerable countries. Our government has adopted the Bangladesh Delta Plan 2100, a comprehensive 100-year strategy plan to achieve a safe, climate resilient and prosperous Delta. Bangladesh has been at the forefront of the global climate diplomacy initiatives. Bangladesh, as the chair of the Climate Vulnerability Forum, an organization of more than 1 billion people of the world's 48 most vulnerable countries, is sharing best practices and adaptation knowledge with other climate vulnerable countries through the Global Center on Adaptations South Asia Regional Office in Dhaka. Our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina during Glasgow COP26 in November 2021 stressed the need to climate finance adaptation and mitigation actions, nature-based climate solutions, and so on. Also, she called upon the developed countries to fulfill their commitments of providing $100 billion with a 50-50 balance between adaptation and mitigation. Excellencies, distinguished guests, I would like to share Bangladesh's success stories in COVID management, including saving lives, supporting livelihoods, and economic recovery under the leadership of our Prime Minister. Financial packages worth $23 billion helped the economy recover quickly and post a growth of 6.94% in 2021. Bangladesh achieved the WHO target of vaccinating 70% of the total population ahead of deadline. Remember, our population is 165 million. Uh, being ranked fifth out of uh, 121 countries in the Nikki COVID-19 recovery index of May 2022 was a reflection of Bangladesh's success in COVID management. We call for global cooperation to fight against COVID-19 challenges and to accelerate economic recovery. Distinguished participants, Bangladesh's geostrategic location as a bridge between South Asia and Southeast Asia, homogeneous demographic structure, present political stability, economic growth, and large consumer market can offer opportunities for trade and investment. I mean, uh, foreign domestic investment in Bangladesh. Our achievements in MDGs were also significant. Over the decade, our poverty rate has gone down from 31.5% to 20.5%, where extreme poverty rate is only 10.5%. Our per capita income multiplied more than threefold now am I amounting to US dollar 2,824, which is uh, uh, higher than the per capita income of India and Pakistan. The infant mortality rate was reduced to 23.67% per 1,000, maternal mortality rate to 173 per 100,000 life births, and longevity of life rose to 73 years. We have set up many government and private hospitals 
and more than 18,000 community clinics all over the country to cater health care services mainly to women and children. According to World Economic Forum, Bangladesh is ranked seventh in political empowerment of women ahead of its regional neighbors. We have given emphasis to reform our education system. We have established 20 new public technological and general universities in addition to 52 public universities and 108 private universities to offer higher education. Female and male school enrollment ratio rose to 53 and 47 in 2017 uh, from 35 to 65 in 2009. Enrollment in pre-primary and primary level rose to 99 percent. The increasing female education has significantly lowered the rate of child marriage and social discrimination. Bangladesh is now among the five fastest growing economies in the world and ranked 41st in terms of GDP in the world. Bangladesh will officially graduate into a lower middle income country in 2026. It has already been declared graduated in 2017, but according as per official procedure of the United Nations, we will go uh, and due to COVID, we ourselves, uh, I mean, has uh, asked for two years grace period because if we are graduated LDC facilities in terms of trade and investment will be curtailed. That's why our, <laughs> our government and the businessmen asked for some more years to continue as least development, developed countries. But uh, actually in terms of um, per capita income, standard of living and all criteria, we are a middle income country. We have invested heavily in our infrastructure. We are launching mega infrastructure projects like the Padma Breeze. The breeze is uh, uh, 10 kilometers long and it is the longest breeze uh, on the river. Uh, in the world, river breezes are not so long. Uh, and also Dhaka Metro Rail project, Kornofuli uh, Tunnel, the Rupur nuclear, nuclear power plant and Matarbari coal blast power plant, based power plant. The country has already ensured nearly 10% electricity coverage as its power generation capacity has risen to 25,235 megawatt now. Our investment in digitization and connectivity has spurred the digital economy, youth-led innovations, and transformative socioeconomic changes. Dear participants, uh, some challenges let me discuss. Likewise, all countries of the world, at present Bangladesh has been facing some challenges. The Russia-Ukraine war happened at a time when the world had just started to recover from the fallout caused by more than two years of COVID-19 pandemic. But the recovery is facing inflationary pressure due to supply shortages in the face of higher demands as countries began to expand economic activities. The ongoing war has created 
a new shock for the world. Supply disruptions and financial sanctions pose serious economic challenges. The ramifications of these challenges are seen higher commodity and oil prices. Bangladesh is already feeling the heat of Russia-Ukraine war in many ways. If the war continues for a longer period, the impact will intensify. The impact through reduction in exports and rise in import bills pose threat to our economy. With high energy prices, the chain effect is felt through a hike in prices of gas, fertilizer, and other essentials. Our electricity generation process is suffering due to energy crisis. It has domino effect on our trade, investment, and employment for huge population. The war poses potential threats to peace and stability across the globe. Bangladesh, therefore, urges for restraint by all parties and to immediately resume diplomatic efforts and dialogue in order to settle all disputes by peaceful means and refrain from taking any action that may endanger international peace and security. With these few words, uh, I like to stop here. Thanks for patient hearing. Okay, thank you. Uh, a Grameen Bank was established in 1980s, early 80s. And uh, during the, that time, government was also supporting its flourishment. And government also gave some funds. The idea of Grameen Bank was to empower, empowering uh, poor women and uh, popularizing microcredit. And their credit realization was more than 90%. Uh, so it has been going on, but uh, in uh, 2010-11, uh, there were some disputes among some of the uh, quarters of Bangladesh, and they uh, also the government wanted that he should be uh, instead of being the managing director of the bank, uh, Professor Yunus should keep his himself as the advisor of the bank or the chairman of the bank, maybe the higher position, because there is an age limit to be a uh, managing director, I mean full-time uh, officer of the bank that was, that is fixed 65 in Bangladesh. He was already 70 during that time. So. Uh, there was a dispute and uh, he went to the court. Uh, all over the world there is an impression that Grameen, uh, Professor Yunus have been removed from Grameen Bank. But this is not partially true, not fully. And uh, he is uh, still the shareholder of Grameen Bank and he runs some uh, ventures of the Grameen institutions. For example, the Grameen phone, uh, the Grameen Bank Foundation has 30% share, and there are many other institutions. Uh, we are uh, fortunate and we are happy that his idea of social business have been popularized in many developed countries as well, and uh, uh, they are getting popularity day by day. And as citizens of Bangladesh, we are proud of him. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Yes. If I may be allowed, in spite of uh, 
sitting here at Cheers. the moderator's desk. Just very briefly, uh, COVID. Thank you for having given us the details. It's a very impressive record how Bangladesh was able to combat the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, my question is, is there any uh, movement um, in regards to vaccinations, any political movement that would exploit uh, fears and concerns of the population? Because in Europe, one of the most divisive issues everywhere here, also in my country, in Austria, in this country, mm -hmm. we have now very strong groups that challenge the government because of the fear of the of uh, people of the negative yes. side effects of vaccination of vaccinations particularly in terms of the most modern vaccines that uh, have a certain impact on uh, the genetic um, aspects is there any such uh, a comparable uh, exploitation of the issue by uh, political movements and i just would wonder what kind of vaccine Bangladesh is using, or what kind of vaccines? Because that's also a very big divisive issue here in Europe. Yes. Which kind of vaccine? Uh, let me first clarify the vaccine issues. Uh, as soon as the COVID situation broke out, and uh, the vaccines were uh, invented or discovered, uh, we went to a contract with uh, India, uh, India, one of the uh, companies in India also is a co-producer of AstraZeneca invented in the UK. So uh, the government uh, uh, made an agreement with that Indian company to procure 300,000 uh, vaccines. But when it broke out very intensively in India, they stopped the supply. So our people are very uh, helpless situation. So we sought for uh, vaccines all over the world. During that time, China came with their product, uh, Sinovac. So initially, our people took some Sinovac vaccines, but immediately after a few months, that vaccine uh, our people did not take, and um, AstraZeneca supply came from other sources. Also from Gava, we received a uh, lot of vaccines and our government also bought. So finally, our people got AstraZeneca, then uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, and then Moderna. So these are now, there is no shortage of demand. Ultimately, we also got the supply from India. And the situation that you have mentioned, in many of the developed countries, there is, uh, I mean, uh, propaganda against taking vaccines. But in our country, no such type of propaganda. People willingly are taking vaccines. The government has done such a good thing that even in the villages, the uh, vaccine giving centers were established and people stood in a long queue and every day these are uh, the situation and now uh, this I mean death rate in Bangladesh is very few this is partially because our people even now when the COVID situation from we have improved our people still use masks and in the villages there is a, a self, I mean, uh, I mean, what should say? Uh, we have um, um, good sunshine, then uh, some other elements which protect them from spreading the disease in the village area. 
and they work hard in the fields and in uh, their uh, laborious job. So, uh, and by the grace of Almighty God, we are more or less uh, safe. And our total death all over the country is below 30,000. Maybe 28,000, 29,000. Incredible. Austria with a population of 8 million has 20,000. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we have 165 million people. And our death rate is, um, death is 28,000. Let me clarify one thing. Some of our media, international media also, and in our country also, says that if you do not examine yourself, whether he is a COVID patient or something else, how could you, I mean, enumerate the deaths? Say, for example, I take 50% doubtful cases. Even then, if you add 20 plus 10,000, 10, then if, even it is 38,000. Maximum 40,000 yeah. COVID death, death for the, uh, I mean, uh, criticize those who criticize this. But government official rate is 28,000. That's, that's indeed incredible, as Dr. Koshler said. Uh, are there any questions? Any more questions? Okay. Uh, yes, Michael. Uh, I'd like to spread the questions that cover some of the thematic areas of our conference. And so I'd like to ask, um, based on Bangladesh and Africa, I mean, Bangladesh has uh, over 160 million people, Africa has over 1 billion. And so I'd like to understand why the various markets um, have not been explored over time towards cooperative development on the various regions, so what is being done uh, in Bangladesh to try and you know, form partnerships? Africa. Exactly, yes, please. Okay, okay. Actually, <coughs> uh, 10 to 15 years back, there were some movement attempts for uh, going to some of the African countries and get lease of culture, uh, uh, arable lands, and our people started agriculture in some of the countries, uh, to my understanding. But gradually, those did not last long. Uh, those who have gone, they are doing business. In South Africa also, uh, but maybe due to cultural differences, many people did not migrate. Uh, the other thing is we have uh, businesses with Europe, Middle East, and Asian countries. Because of the distance, maybe the businesses are not profitable with Africa, African countries. However, one of our consumer pr product manufacturing uh, um, industries, have their business in many African countries. And also, our pharmaceuticals, we are very, uh, uh, I mean, rich in producing pharmaceutical products. And Bangladesh is exporting pharmaceutical products in about 150 countries. So, uh, Africa is a good market for our pharmaceutical products and also, as I have mentioned, for some uh, consumer products, food items. And uh, I think the business and the cooperation between two countries have been growing. And the last thing I want to mention, our people are very fond of cricket and football. Uh, in our football team, you will find always you will find many African players working, <laughs> playing in Bangladesh. Say for example from Nigeria and other countries. And some of the Nigerian players 
have become citizen of Bangladesh. <laughs> We, yes, we have one more question, and uh, I think that's the final question. Uh, yes. My name is, my name is, my name is Wagner, and I would, I, would like to, I would like to ask you, what's the difference of, of the relation of uh, Bangladesh uh, in between China and India? Which, which one would you favor in, uh, okay, in a global scale? Like, uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, from the very beginning of our independence, Bangladesh maintains the foreign policy with the idea of friendship to all and marriage to none. And this policy we are continuing till now. We are not partner of any of the uh, uh, political treaties or any uh, regional pacts except South, South Asia Association for Regional Cooperation, regional cooperation and BIM State. These are business associations and we always believe that we maintain friendship with big powers, uh, the US, the European countries, and with our neighbor India, and also with China. In terms of our relationships with China and India, both the countries are liberal. They do not quarrel that why you have relationship with India. And India do not tell us why you have relationship with China? Because the commodities that we buy from China are not available in India. And at the same time, there are some commodities, for example, food products or something, which we buy from our neighbor. These we cannot buy from China. And our business, for example, trading from China and trading from India is always in their favor. That means our exports are less than our imports. And they, both the countries are benefited. Uh, so, but we are not losers in the sense that, for example, the ready-made garments. In the world, we are number two in uh, supplying ready-made garments worldwide. The raw materials of these products we buy from India and China. So sourcing from China is cheaper. At the same time, in our infrastructure development venture, uh, we float international tender. And uh, Europe, China, India, all the countries participate. In many cases, China becomes the lowest in terms of price. So we have to give them the contract. In this uh, way, uh, many of our uh, infrastructure buildup has been made by China. But you see, our country has not gone like Sri Lanka, taking short-term loans, taking uh, uh, infrastructure development in unproductive sectors, no. Mm -hmm. The sectors which we are now developing are income generating. For example, the Padma Bridge, it has been launched and started in 25th June last month, and immediately after inauguration of the bridge, every single day uh, the toll, toll collection is about uh, 
About 0.3 30 million. Is 30 million Bangladesh currency. Bangladesh currency. I mean, three crores taka every day. So it is uh, profit bearing. Uh, of course, it has been uh, uh, built from our own resources. So, and and uh, the U.S. is not unhappy because our relationship with China because. U.S. is not a substitute to China. We cannot buy raw materials from the U.S. So we have friendship with all the countries.